Hey guys, uh, I'm here talking to you today about the Allen Heath T112, T80, and R72, uh, possibly other models of the old iLive system. The consoles will boot up to a white screen. Sometimes you can reboot them and they'll come on up. Sometimes they get stuck on a white screen, then they always boot to a white screen. And what it is, is this, or usually is, that I've found, is the single board computer, which is the little computer inside. And you see that battery there, that CMOS battery, will go dead. Now, they made these with three different boards. This is the AE7040 board, which is the Axiom Tech board. Uh, and uh, what you have to do is replace that. Uh, battery right there. It's a CR2032. Uh, on this model, that battery is soldered in. And um, after doing one of these already and desoldering this battery, uh, it is right in there and it is a booger. Uh, the solder's real hard. It's like some lead free solder and this is old stuff and it was very difficult to get that done without uh, making a mess. So um, what I would recommend in this case is to cut that battery out. Uh, there's a tab underneath. You can get to it and cut it and then cut this top tab and then solder uh, wires to it. And what you would solder to it is one of these. It's a CR2032 battery holder you can buy on Amazon. Uh, these have an on and off switch. I couldn't find one that didn't, but you can put a CR2032 battery in that holder, solder your plus and minus uh, wires where the plus and minus was on that battery, and uh, you'll be uh, in good shape. I've already just done one of these, and the rest of the video will show the console where I had taken it apart and actually done that. Another note that while I was in here, the, the unit that I've already done, this is an extra unit I had, uh, this fan was going bad. And I also got that fan from Amazon. That is a 40 by 40 by 10 millimeter fan. Um, and it's five volt. Uh, this is the original fan that came off of it. You can see it and maybe see the original part number, but it's a five volt fan. I replaced it with this one that came off of Amazon. Uh, it worked like a champ. The speed was great. The noise was perfect. Um, everything good. You just have to uh, cut and splice because the uh, original fan's got a different connector on it. But uh, the rest of the video will cover um, uh, more of how to get the um, uh, this part out and uh, what to do on this Axion board to uh, 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 what has to happen after you put it back in. There's some settings that you have to, to fix for it to work. Uh, I said that they use three different boards. This is the Axion board. Uh, there's a Fujitsu board and on the Fujitsu board, I've, I've done one of those before. The battery is just a regular socket where you can just pop the battery out, pop the battery in, uh, but the, uh, there's still a reset procedure on it that's similar. Uh, anyway, um, I'll merge in the other video now of the, uh, the actual um, unit, the actual T112 that I did this in. Okay. Today we have an Allen & Heath iLive T112, although this should be fairly similar in the T80 and the R72. Having issues with the unit, when it boots up, it will boot up to a white screen and sit there. And I've already fixed this unit. I'm making a video after the fact, but I'm going to take you through what it takes to fix that. Um, I've done two of these and both of them have been bad uh, batteries on the uh, little computer that's inside that they call the SBC, the single board computer. And there it is right there. 
So let me show you. Uh, you take off the uh, top trim piece. Got it laying right there. But you take the top tr trim off there, off of this side, and then take all the screws out here. Uh, these are all Phillips head, except for I believe this one is a Torx T10. Take that off. Now, when you're inside here, there's four screws on this board and they're uh, in all four corners. Um, a short uh, stubby screwdriver with a T10 on it will get you uh, in all four to get it out. Uh, you have to disconnect all these cables and be very careful with this one right here in the front. I'm sorry. This one right there in the front, that video cable, it'll have some hot glue or silicone or something on it that you'll need to take off, but those pins are very delicate. And uh, I know this is, I've already done this and it's inside, but basically you take all these cables out and uh, right here, I'll uh, cut to a picture here uh, that shows the board with the battery on it. This board is the, uh, I believe this is the Axiom Tech board. It has a soldered in um, drive. This is the AE7040 board. There's three different boards. Uh, they look, they all three look different. This one has a soldered in battery. And what I did is uh, you can see I added this uh, battery holder, CR2032 battery holder, uh, come off of Amazon. It's got an on and off switch. Uh, tried to look for one that didn't have one, but I couldn't find one, so this one's got it. And I took the battery off and desoldered the battery and soldered in the two leads to where I could use a non-soldered in battery. Um, if I had to do this again, I would probably snip the leads on the battery from the top side instead of uh, taking the um, the battery off from unsoldering it on the bottom because at the bottom it's, it's it's a lot of stuff on the bottom let's just put it that way and it was really hard to get it desoldered clean um, next time I would just cut the battery loose and solder it on to the terminals that are sticking above the the board uh, anyway, once you do that uh, and get everything back in, you can boot up, but uh, the screen will have, um, will look weird. It'll actually show the screen twice. It'll show one in the top, one in the bottom, and you won't be able to read it. What you need to do for that is connect a VGA cable up to an external monitor, and that way you can see it hook up a USB keyboard to the back and turn the unit on. And I'll lead you through the steps that you have to go through real quick. When the unit boots up, uh, on the external monitor, it'll look right. You'll wanna hit the delete key. Okay, this is asking for a password. Yours probably won't ask for a password, but the password is digital. D-I-G-I-T-A-L, could have a capital D. Go ahead and enter that. Uh, most of the time after you've changed in that battery, that will clear and that won't be on there anymore. Uh, the first thing you do is go into standard CMOS features, set your date and time correctly. Um, all these IDE channels will probably already look like that. The flash drive that's on there is already populated. Uh, what you'll need to do, the main thing you have to do is set this drive A to none. It'll be set to a floppy drive. Uh, then you'll want to get in the advanced chipset features. Go to the AGP P2P bridge control and on select display device, this will be set to, I think, LCD. You change it to CRT plus LCD. The panel type, you'll set to 800 by 618 bit, like this. All right, then you can get out of that. And uh, that's really it. Um, 
some uh, instructions will tell you to set the supervisor password. Uh, that's if that password wasn't on there, that digital password. That's the default that they have from the factory. Anyway, you, you can set that if you want to. I did. Uh, then you save and exit setup. Yes. And the unit will reboot. And you should see the screen correctly. And it should boot. And this one will. Still got the external hooked up. Anyway, uh, bottom line, the CR2032 uh, backup battery goes bad on the motherboard and you have to change it. So this is the, I think this is the Axiom Tech board. Uh, the other one I've done is a Fujitsu. On the Fujitsu board, it actually has a uh, socket where you can just change the battery instead of a soldered in battery. It makes it very handy. Uh, but there are different steps for the Fujitsu uh, board. Uh, they're similar, but not exactly the same. Uh, also on the Fujitsu board, um, sorry, I don't have those instructions. I'll try to put them in a link, but also on the Fujitsu board, a note on that is that board after it goes dead will not turn on automatically. So when you turn on the, the console, the computer inside will not actually turn on. And you have to uh, uh, shunt two of the jumpers, and I don't know which ones it is, but if you look up a uh, manual for that motherboard, you can find the power on uh, jumpers, and you short those out and it'll turn the computer on. Once you turn the computer on, there are specific steps to the Fujitsu board. Uh, like I said, I'll try to put a link to those. But uh, once you turn on the Fujitsu board, you'll have it hooked up just like this with the external keyboard. And uh, you go in and change some settings on it where it'll always stay on. So uh, if you've got an iLive T112 or T80 or R72, um, those are all uh, pretty much identical uh, inside. They all have that single board computer. And at the age that they're at, they'll give trouble nowadays. So hope this helps someone.